Welcome back, everybody. If you're just joining us now, you might be saying, wait, game one's already over? Yeah, ended pretty quickly, 30 minutes here. Pretty much destruction from the side of Griffin over Dom One Gaming. Made it look easy, especially Tarzan on, yes, Sejuani coming in here and putting on a show for us tonight. And it was less about the pick and more about how he read the play. He was so far ahead of this game here. Felt like Griffin were already in game two when game one was being played in front of us. Really nice stuff from them, and Viper didn't really have to do much. He was the real damage dealer, but you wouldn't have noticed it because Aatrox just kind of pressed Q a lot. <laughs> and Sword was probably my MVP because some of these ults were just popping off. This one was my favorite. Yeah. Scion Speedway stuff as he gets one, and it stuns up the next one. Sword makes Scion look like a very intricate champion, which is definitely a compliment to him. All of the stuns hit all of the momentum for Griffin after this game, number one. Best of five, remember, between Griffin and Damwon Gaming. And Damwon have looked good from ahead, but they were not ahead in this game as Griffin read them time and time again. Yeah, the Camille just got too far behind. The early dive that got read by Griffin as a team and turned on its head. After that, the Camille not doing much, even after rushing the Guardian Angel, just died and then died again, essentially. Funny that Aatrox does more damage than Ezreal. You gotta be super fed to make that a reality. One tower, two kills, otherwise perfect game from Griffin. This was a domination in 30 minutes 28. No changes on the side of Griffin, as you might imagine. They were very, very good here, and I believe no changes overall, but I could be mistaken on that one. Players, they're Looks still like smiling. It. They understood that from about 14 minutes, their chance of winning were getting into the single digits, so. With that information, and now with Canyon, a chance to talk to his coaching staff and really understand some of the decisions that were made by Tarzan in game number one. But well, we see a change in priority because, you know what? If it's solo queue, you lick your lips when you have a Sejuani picked against your Camille. What will happen in the draft coming up this time? It's an interesting one. You mentioned still smiles on the faces of Dom one, but Canyon definitely looked a little bit downtrodden after game number two. Hopefully he brings it back here because I just want to see another fantastic game. We're here, Dom one this time on the blue side. And Griffin is going to be on the right, on but they, the red. And they have already started things off on a different foot. Red side, Aatrox span. I think that was a mistake from Dom one because we already saw that Aatrox was a great flex pick for Griffin, and it goes mid lane, it punishes yeah. them, and Griffin aren't going to be trifling with it anymore. We'll see what's left open, because we're seeing some adjustments. The Urgot and the Aatrox are both taken away from this draft. So it feels like a Kali, an Irelia, and that sort of stuff will slip into this game as Griffin would much rather just ban away the Rakan. I think they're targeting the bot lane here in a way that we haven't seen as much of recently. They're not going to allow Zaya Rakan as a potential duo. Doesn't seem like they're going to ban away a Galio either. Looks like the last ban has to be the Cassiopeia, unless Griffin has some kind of other answer to that, but so far no team has. So Cassiopeia predictably is banned, so Rise, Kha'Zix, Victor, all available. Akali as well, a lot of adjustment in terms of what's open, but maybe no adjustment from Dumb One, and I think Griffin's fine with this. They're happy enough to leap open the Galio, so we'll see what Griffin will respond with in this particular scenario. Scion flex well, for them. Yeah. Scion for Sword looks so good in game number one. Doesn't necessarily have to play it. As you mentioned, it could be flexed, but do like the pick. Would be pretty early to pick it up, though. We'll see if they do commit to this one. And if they delay jungle here, it might be because they feel like Sejuani can just do enough interrupting and annoyance factor with her CC in team fights that it's fine against the Camille and the Galio. Because Camille and Galio. We talk about how it's guaranteed engage. It's also, you know almost exactly every single spot they're gonna land the moment the chain starts. There is some predictability to it that all the interrupts and soft and hard CC that a Sejuani has can do to interrupt it. So maybe that's just a Griffin read. They feel like they have something that can answer it. Canyon doesn't have to go to Camille. It has started to fall down in terms of priority. We'll see where Damwon wanna go. They want an Ezreal, they probably need to take it in the first round. 
Yeah, you mentioned the Kha'Zix was banned. That's another champion that can get into the back line, but they don't Tom? have to pick it right now. Does Hoyt want to play Tom Kench again is the question that I might raise. Well, no Aatrox this time around, so maybe he'll feel safe for this game. They're putting a lot of thought into it. It's not being auto-locked. The timer continues to tick down here. And the Kha'Zix is left open this time. That was banned away from Canyon. Been his best looking champion so far in Kespa Cup 2018. Galio and Kha'Zix, the Katie Rolster duo that they love to use here, allows the jungle who can invade so reliably like the Kha'Zix. <laughs> and they actually will go now Sejuani into Kha'Zix Galio. <laughs> it's one thing to go Sejuani into Camille Galio because you say, okay, she hook shots in and then she's uh a little bit easy to lock down. It's another thing to go Kha'Zix, Galio, and then answer Sejuani. Okay, Tarzan, you're just a Sejuani fiend. Yeah, I mean, maybe he feels like it's underrated right now. That's a big reason why you would pick it into two different matchups. They also maybe would have feared that it was going to be banned because they picked it out pretty early here as third pick for Griffin. I mean... There's, it's one thing to say they think it's underrated. Most people would say that Sejuani is unplayable. That's what people were saying around Worlds when I asked them about tank jungles. Like, yeah, that stuff, Sejuani, it's unplayable right now, despite being a dominant champion for the most part in 2018. Yeah. We are expecting to see a rework on patch 9.1, you know, with the big changes to her. So this is going to be kind of a love letter to Sejuani, I guess, in the Kespa Cup. Did not think this would happen when I woke up this morning. The Tom Kench is going to be banned anyway because it does fit Damwana now. It has two different people you want to disengage from a fight. The Kha'Zix and the Ezreal. Alistair ban being responded to by Damwon. So a new look support line in this game as Janna is yeah. banned. It went down to the wire there. It went down to zero seconds and hovered for quite a bit. So could have been a bit rushed on that one. But Tana, you know, if you're trying to take out all the different supports to protect the Ezreal, I suppose that's another one. It's a protecting support, but it's something no one plays, right? Janna is not really yeah. seen in competitive play at all. It tells you that Griffin want to play a lot of short range threats because Janna reset is the really only reason you would look at this and say, yes, a Janna ban. So a curious choice there, but it tells you something about where we're going. We want to get in there, put down the box and everyone just Play in melee range, basically. Up in the box. Oh, okay. A Gonna change be a here. Quick switch to Morgana. But an old favorite, right? This is Lahen's Ultra Comfort. It feels like Morgana Shen were his god tier, and from there, things were around. Okay. We get a Morgana counter pick here with the Soraka coming in. <laughs> this is fun. We're playing for bot lane apparently on the side of Damwon and Nogari. We'll be jumping on to the victor. This is one that ended up being a zombie victor against SKT, where he just ran it down. Just kept on dying after the early deaths, went for a pushing build. We're going to try and have pressure in the top side. Klepto against Scion is his thought. Will it be Scion, though? As Scion mid could definitely come out. And yes, it is going to be Scion mid and Jace top if this is the decision. <laughs> there it is. Going to be locked in for Sword. And you got to expect that here. I suppose they could always flex it. But the moment I saw Victor, uh, it did okay. feel like we would be seeing the Jace top. Yeah. Now, Viper has played some Jace bot, but uh, I feel like Jace and Lucian can both go very confidently into the victor and be pretty similar. So yeah. I think they're just having a bit of fun there. The Scion mid lane, again, is people where you say, oh yeah, it could be Scion mid lane, but you're like, oh, come on, it's this person. Chovy was the first guy to play mid lane Urgot. He plays Galio. Scion mid lane is basically the same as Galio. When Galio started to get banned away, Scion, he takes longer to roam, but he just as we know, speedways down the river and can get to bot lane very, very quickly. So Scion versus Galio means whichever team's macro is more ahead, we're probably going to see a visit from the mid laner. And if it's like game number one, that would be Griffin. Yeah, and it could come down to the jungle matchup once again. I mean, Tarzan on the Sejuani game one just essentially mirrored the Camille and said, well, you're not going to get any dives. I'm going to be right on top of you. That perfect pathing we saw also got behind him at the Rift Herald, as we all did see there in game number one. This time up against the Kha'Zix that I was expecting with the Galio. We'll see how he does up against Canyon's second try. This series is already really delivered in terms of picks because it's so different, Valdez. We don't have pick Compass, pick Comp, Lissandra, Urgot running around. We have a lot of different stuff. 
being shown in the rift. Double counter picks here, which will be more consequential. The Soraka counter pick to the Morgana, or the Jace looking to try to put the zombie back into the zombie victor in the top side. Yeah, I can't wait for that matchup in particular. Always love a Jace in the top lane, this time against Victor, and it's Nuggery versus Sword. So guys, we're ready to jump into game number two right now. Griffin up against Dot One. Let's do it. I'm glad that we have our fan chance back. I was getting a little bit depressing, especially when one team would get a fan chance yeah. and then the other one would just be like, oh, we forgot. But uh, the fans are back in it. We got the tiering squads here. And we got the big beefy boys in the mid lane, thickest as can be, are the Galio and the Scion. And somehow, the jungle thick is going to be the jungle here. thick. Well, I, I remember that Sejuani <laughs> wasn't a boy, so I aborted that one halfway yeah, yeah. through. Sejuani jungle. Tarzan, we wondered, Maybe was it just a pocket pick to kind of answer the predictable engage of Galio and Camille? Seems to just be some comfort because the Kha'Zix matchup can be a tricky one. However, if you get ahead of Kha'Zix, it's even more consequential than if you get ahead of Camille because at least Camille can always E and ult. The Kha'Zix... Yeah. Well, we know about Gragas bowling when you fall behind on AP Gragas, and all you can do is check Baron. Yeah. Feels like the Kha'Zix just kind of puts spikes over the wall and hopes for the best. I want to ask you a question along these lines, because it is the early game. Do you feel like Sejuani, if she gets ahead, is better than some other kind of aggressive choice for the side of Tarzan? You know what I mean? Like, if he picked an aggressive choice and got ahead, yes, he's, you know, he's going to be feeling Talia. good. But do you feel like the Sejuani in that position is better when you get ahead? I think it's more about matchups. I think if you're against a fighter when the tank is ahead, the fighter feels so uh, underpowered in terms of decision making. You really can't do a lot because you know that the enemy has an impactful ult that will basically lead to your death. You can't dive turrets, you can't walk up to skirmish. It's the flow on effect rather than the player impact. Because I think that if Tarzan's wielding a, a skill matchup and gets ahead, he'll still be able to do a lot of informed choices. But he knows how to play ahead with a tank choice and how to play ahead with a fighter choice because he's just a fantastic jungler. I, I am willing to go on record to say that if I'm ranking players for LCK 2019, Tarzan easily cracks top 10 and starts to crack top 5 when you really start to think about it. He is an unbelievable player that was very underrated when Griffin started to leap up. People were ready to praise basically everyone else on the lineup yeah, just because good. Tarzan was playing tank yeah. junglers, right? He wasn't really playing the fighters. It was only later when we had chain interviews where everybody on the side of Griffin was saying, Yes, thank you for the MVP, but this was actually a shot call from Tarzan. Tarzan was the one to say this matchup. That team fight was on by Tarzan. The people started to pay more attention and see that it's his shot calling in the early to mid game that has really allowed Griffin to become the late game team fighting comp team that we know they can be. So at the end of the day, when it comes to Tarzan, I defer to him on most jungling matters, and he's got the perfect name for it as well. Yep, that he does. And I mean, his shot calling, but also his pathing. Uh -oh. Nuclear's going to get locked up here. A bit of trouble has to flash away. Lahens wanted that one. He flashes for Ignite range, yeah. but doesn't get it. That's <laughs> aggressive. Not quite able to make it happen. But yeah, Tarzan and Score, I mean, for 2018, those were two of the bigger names, as you mentioned before. If you were a jungler and you wanted to learn how to path well, you could just take a look at those two guys and learn so, so much. And hopefully Peanut gets back into the same form he was in spring season and we get all three firing in the same split. That would be awesome to see, all three, because they do have different styles there. And yeah. Peanut has had that historic good matchup into Score more often than not. Tarzan himself going to take away the blue buff here. We back away and... Again, we remember the table setting for this series. It does feel like the next generation. And one of the common criticisms for the LCK with all the roster changes is that it feels like a lot of rosters have downgraded. People have said that out loud. And while I think it's more intricate, you know, if we're talking about power rankings, like where does this player fall and the best player in the world, definitely can understand the sentiment. One of the reasons that we haven't seen sheer upgrades on a lot of rosters is you have rosters like Griffin and Damwon that have packed together a lot of new talent that hasn't gone to other teams. These are players that have been locked into new orgs, so you don't just look at SKT, KT, and whatever name Samsung is using at the moment and say, <laughs> where are the players at? Or Kingzone Dragon X as well. Yeah. You also have to load in that 
all this great talent is being hoarded by new orgs and just means that there are a lot of great players in the LCK that are spread over more teams. Yeah, I mean, there's the biggest thing for Dom1 that everybody loves to talk about right now, which is their solo queue rankings. I mean, uh, Fionn was posting about it on Twitter. You were saying it the first time Dom1 came out. This is the out. first time I've seen, when, in this game, we talked about it last time, but in this particular game, I've never cast a pro game where all players are top 10 challengers. All of these players are top 10 or better on the side of Dom1 Gaming, and yeah. yet, Griffin made them look like solo queue players by being ahead in a macro sense in game number one. Now, that part is true. And from behind, I think solo queue ranking doesn't mean a lot because, yes, you have a sick outplay, but he's got a bigger item. So, sadly, it doesn't really be felt as much. If they have a big early game, if Canyon gets going, if the first Galio ult comes off, then you can start to see the result of all the micro mechanics that are going to be super on point from Damwon Gaming. Well, taking a look at this game so far, we see already that uh, Kenyon has been spotted out there. A couple of defensive control wards in the red side jungle here for Griffin on the top side. Jungler's not quite level six yet, especially for Sejuani. That's very important to always keep an eye on. So we'll have to wait a little bit still before the action gets going for the side of Griffin. If we had a caster cam, I'd have a quizzical look on my face because the first item from Chovy is in fact going into the Joram's Fist here, which is uh, not normally a Scion item. Titanic Hydra or Sterix, I guess, is going to be the item here. But uh, interesting. Don't you never see a Sterix gauge, especially yeah. as a first <laughs> item on Scion. But uh, yeah, that's happened. So Let's go and attack Scion this time. Hey, I mean, he saw what Sword was able to do with those drifts. Maybe he could do it and get into the back line. Occam's Razor, inting Scion, am I right? Yeah. You know, uh -huh. anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will come back to you with the updated information there. But it's an interesting choice as a first item. Titanic Hydra, I'm thinking about it, not sure. Tarzan is actually trying to steal away buffs. He has bot lane with a big advantage, so this is why the timing's happening. So Watch for the time burst here. The hands of Viper getting in, no coming in, and actually stolen away by Canyon. Is able to pick up level six, too, after that one, and Griffin immediately turn tail and run away. So that's all about the timed burst, and they actually messed that one up. Do Griffin, a slight thing there, you should have the advantage. Just like you always give Elise and previously Lee Sin the advantage around a smite because of the timed burst. A misplay around it. Well done by Canyon. Like you mentioned, consequential that he picks up the level six from it as well, because Tarzan does not have level six. He's also 10 CS behind about two camps and a half, and he's still struggling to find that level six. Would feel much better in the bottom lane, kind of three on three, if he had that right now. So they weren't able to leave any deep vision in the red side jungle was Griffin. And the reason why Tarzan wards at that moment is he knows the enemy is level six. There's no clear lanes for Kha'Zix to gank. Getting top side is going to be too tricky at the moment because Jace is doing very comfortably in the lane. So the best use of a Q of all first Kha'Zix is to leap over the wall and just solo down the Infernal Drake. That's what you would expect people to do. So the ward there is very, very important because it stops that from being a free objective. And it would go against the flow of play as well because Griffin have been pretty heavily winning the trades in bot side. Just another smart Tarzan thing. Can expect a lot more of those as the, the games do go along. Has that ward down there. So playing towards the top side, going to pick up his own level six after he picks up that red buff. We'll have to wait and see what he wants to do alongside the ganks. So far, the top lane, too. We talked about that one. Sword versus Nogri, the victor versus the Jace. Looks like it's actually slightly going the direction of the victor. Kind of funnily as things come along here. I think that the matchup does take a little bit longer to get going, but Nogari will be able to go itemize very standardly into Iceborne Gauntlet, and that armor will be important to at least the start here, which is going to be some lethality stacking coming through from Sword. The turret threat here, of course, immense from the side of the Jace, and it's just because Jace can pretty much control lane trades that we do like the matchup. And his bot side will be spotted out by a Control Ward if he comes up any further. Well, Hens playing with fire. This Morgana that he loves to play all the time. Still very squishy this early on. Take a look at his items. Only has the support item as well. So does go for a back on the control ward, as does Viper on the Lucian. Going to pick up some items. Mobility boots first for Lehens. Wants to be out on that map. 
I want to see Scion back so we get some information of what's going on with this mid lane build. Speaking of back timings, both teams playing around them as the trades finally do get shown on screen and top. That ward is taken away here too, and Kha'Zix hops the wall. They were looking for him there just in case, but did not come through. A smart play there by Canyon just to hop away. What about done for Showmaker? We'll see what the answering approach is. It could just be Merc Treads, I guess, on the side of Chovy, but I hope it's some information into where the build is going. I think that's a bit of poke off as, once again, we can try to blow his flash as it comes back off cooldown. And yes, Derex wow. on Scion. Very interesting as a huh. first item rush. Well, it's one of those offensive items that's a little bit more defensive because you do get that shield, so... The idea behind you know. it is that there's a lot of magic damage burst that he's going to be able to be lingered on. The Scion's going to get in there and have to deal with the ultimate from the victor and other annoyances, and he just wants to stay in the mid doing as much fighting as possible when the fight starts. Still, so different from expectation is despite having the Soraka counter pick, the trade of flashes early in the game means first turret checkpoint goes to the Lucian. They're dominating that bot lane. It's up 11 CS right now. He's having a fun time. Meanwhile, because of that Tarzan able to get on in here, really no vision in the bot side river for the side of Damwon. They're going to come in now, but it's too late. Tarzan is low, but there's no real way to close that gap. It looks like Canyon was attempting to. Now, nuclear on the backside. Going to take a little bit of chip damage there from the calling, but really the biggest thing there was the Infernal Drake goes to Griffin. And that is, of course, against expectation because the Soraka was supposed to represent some good lane trades which haven't happened. Should notice that the other counter pick also is going farm for farm at this moment as Jace has the Hex Drinker for safety and the Serrated Dirk to work into probably a Yoma's Ghostblade first, you'd imagine, in the top lane. So it's the, right now, the last round counter picks aren't contributing much, but an Infernal is a big prize for the early game here for Griffin. Ping's coming out. It seems like Griffin has an idea that Canyon's here. Nice interrupt <laughs> as Showmaker is going to get the stun down, but immediately charges into Canyon. Um, He's trying to turn this one around. Look at the damage he does to Canyon with that AD. Man, he's getting on top of him. Is there anything oh, more boy. manly than turning around on a Kha'Zix, Q igniting him as Scion, <laughs> and then just punching him in the damn face? That's what he does. He has grasp, too. He's just... Not going to go down here. Picks up a ruby crystal on the backside, so. He's almost got hysterics now, so under the recipe. 625 gold on that yeah. one. Oh, uh, you just, normally, Scion has to waddle away because he's got nothing <laughs> after his first round. But first, he interrupts Showmaker. Showmaker doesn't get the justice punch off. And then he says, hey, how about a first blood? <laughs> if he hit that smashy, you know, he would have been close. Maybe could have. Flash for an auto onto Canyon. Would, would have been a close one there. Mid lane fighter Scion. Let's go. Juggernaut confirmed. Chovy doesn't want to be left in the dust as people that we consider to be fantastic players on the side of Griffin. Gives him some turret threat when he inevitably hits a side lane in a 1 3 1 if that is where the game goes. So, fun thing to take away, something to try at home. I'm sure if we queue up after this game, there's going to be some. AD mid Scion going uh. on. <laughs> but in solo queue, they'll just build a, a Bloodthirster or yeah. Infinity Edge, and we'll get sad. Please don't. Tarzan, in the meanwhile, has been a lot less involved this game, but has still gone, what? Within one or two camps of his opponent jungler. So he's got the Infernal Drake too, which is the most meaningful lead in the game. It's definitely a big one. You're mentioning how maybe that extra AD is going to help him chip away at the turret. Already has one of the checkpoints. Would be funny to see build switched around because of the turret switcheroony with the plating and all that stuff. Showmaker starting this fight. Tarzan is nearby. Rotation from the bottom lane too, but immediately the pings come out and Showmaker going to take an inch back there. Not going to get too frisky on the fight. So if you actually pull off a Scion Speedway that we saw happen in the previous game from Sword, there's also a 0.8 AD ratio <laughs> on the ultimate when you go max range. So it already yeah. has really high burst damage. Just speaking oh, of burst damage. He wants to make this happen, but the Ezreal comes in 
And double flash from the side of Dom1 means that he'll be fine to trade his summoners for two flashes. Viper's still got everything on his side. And they both have to get low to heal up nuclear as well. So the health lead, they're not going to be massive as the Blade of the Ruin King is already done onto Viper. So happy enough to leverage the health bars as we're seeing the rest of the teams back up the bot lane plays. And take a look at this. The side of Dom1 do know this is coming in, but is it too late? Hoyt does not have his flash. Ultimate is going to hit nuclear under the turret. Can they burst him? Yes, they can. Make it a second kill, too. Tarzan getting low, though. It's going to be chopped down by Canyon. And now Showmaker did already use his flash, but he uh -oh. is on the Solo chase. kill top side as well. Oh, what? Didn't even see that one. Sword finally make it happen in the top lane. I know Summoner one as well. Maybe Noguri was mid teleport and not watching the top side. Oh we'll get boy. the replay. Yeah, yeah, he was. He's mid teleport. He doesn't get to watch. And by the time he realizes it, he's already dead. Nicely played by the side of Griffin. But unfortunately, Noguri caught watching. That's a big problem for the side of Damwon. That was the lane, even though it's a counter matchup. He was doing well. Oh. He was kind of that hope for Dom1 that could come from behind the farming victor, but now he gets solo killed. Ooh. This is like when you're having a bad day and you come home and you just need to unwind and your wife got laid off. And that's what you're finding yeah. out in this particular game is the turret dive starts well. Canyon does get Tarzan down, so that's cathartic on the back end, to use a word and capitalize on a word that we used in the previous game. But the solo kill is the icing on the cake for Griffin is now to go back, get that Yomu's Ghost Blade, and maybe you can actually make those turret plates, which are now just going to be turrets, start to roll down on the top side of the map for Dom1. Kenan trying to fight back here, going for the Cloud Drake. He does a bit of damage, okay. He's going to get Smite Rage. Oh, oh no! 16 health, and Tarzan snipes it away. It's not your day. Apparently, if you're Dom1 Gaming, that also goes against them. We've seen two Smite battles. One when they went to Canyon for a red buff. The second one, though, is the stacking Drake on the side of Griffin as everyone loses their mind. I want to see a Titanic Hydra on Chovy, but maybe I'm getting greedy because <laughs> right now, Griffin, they can walk up. They can take the first turret of the game and get some more gold onto Viper. Things coming up big. Things coming up, Griffin. Griffin just ruling the map right now. They get that successful dive in the bottom lane, showing Dom1 how it's done, even if it was no done summoners, a little bit later. No cleanse on Soraka. Okay. Boy, oh, he's in trouble. Nuclear is going to get ulted down. There's the binding, and you are going to go bye-bye. In comes Galio, though. Viper is able to flash away, but Lahan's in a lot of trouble. Is going to go down here. Have they gone too deep is the question. Here comes Chovy. On that fighter Zion, and ooh, gonna use the blasting plant. Tarzan gets out of there. Meanwhile, Tarz or Viper rather taking a big chunk of that bottom turret, and he's got a big chunk of gold ahead of his opponent because nuclear has been dunked so far with both the solo lane attention and other people joining. Two deaths down, 40 CS down. Tarzan, this is a great gank timing because whoever you hit, they're gonna die. Tries to fight back. At least Showmaker gets there in time on the Galio to pick up one kill. Cannot spare the blush of the second. And when you're getting away with an inner turret dive at 17 minutes, it's also a sign of the map control that Griffin have in supremacy over Dom1. Yeah, you know, didn't expect this one to feel this one-sided. I think a lot of people were saying that Griffin was the better team, that they were going to take the series, a lot of 3-1 predictions and stuff like that. But uh, the, the fact that this looks so one-sided too is definitely a statement coming through from Griffin. I had a message from Gorilla just before the game, so I said, what's your prediction? I said, oh, 3-1 Griffin. He said, and I was like, what about you? And he said, oh, 3-2 Damwon. And I'm like, really? Like that, that was pretty surprising <laughs> that he actually gave this series to Damwon. I said, how do they win? Because when I'm thinking about the series, I really thought Griffin had the number of Damwon. He said, well, I really believe in Canyon. I'm like, really, over Tarzan? He's like, yeah, I think Canyon, if he's the reason that uh, they win the start of the series, they can close it down. He sent me a reply after game one saying, sorry, Papa, Tarzan is God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's he's seen the light. He's, Poor remember, gorilla. he's unbiased now. He's over in Misfits. So yeah. He's a fan like the rest of us wanting to see some good League of Legends and uh, certainly saw that from that. Tarzan in the first game. In case you want the full information, he also sent a sad gorilla emote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great that his name is Gorilla and he can do that. But the series isn't over, but it does feel like Griffin have been ahead of the opponent. They're showing us new stuff. I see a second Joram's Fist. 
Does that mean uh, Papa's getting his <laughs> Titanic Hydra? You are. You definitely are, Papa. This is the series where it makes sense, you know? In the beginning, we're like, no way. Is he going to go for that for that Sterix? He does. And now he just wants the icing on the cake with that extra item. We could have a quick one here, Papa. I expected this again to, to be a little bit drawn out, you know? Some slower games now. Griffin really taking it to Dom one here tonight. And uh, we'll have to see how the series comes along, if Dom one have anything up their sleeve to come back in this one and come back in the series. All right, in this game, Showmaker has got a kill. And potentially could do things, that was an insane visual book on the top side. <laughs> uh, Griffin back away from this one. Just looking for a siege, and look, their siege's pretty poor, so it's the Rift Herald channel they wanted to be safe. They finally walk up and will they be able to take this turret? Viper says, nope, not feeling safe enough. There's going to be some delays about the bookkeeping, taking turrets here, unless they look for dives. And speaking of which, Tarzan, oh boy. he's thinking about trying du to kill a Soraka. Nuclear's in the top lane too. And I think they see him here. The ultimate is going to come out. They were thinking about going in on that one. I thought they were, but decide to take it safe this time around. Don't feel as ahead as they did in game one. Still, these are the sort of delays that happen when you have Scion mid lane, when you have Lucian as your AD carry and Jace. So spit pushing for most of the time is that the bookkeeping is slower. It's slower to take the outer turrets, thus it's usually more risky to do something like start a Baron or an Infernal Drake, you know, something very high contestant level is more tricky to start up. So given that reality, things are going to slow down a bit. You're going to need some backs, some control wards to be put together. See so many control wards in the inventory here. There was one put down, so there was at that moment six in the inventory. And Jay's going to get a couple, I imagine, on his back. So given all of that, if we just want to set things up, they know they're ahead here. We know it's 2,600 gold, but they probably feel even further ahead, given that things have really gone their way in a big way. Viper pushes out mid lane. Let's see what the objective is here. It's just like the previous game, their Baron buff damage, the speed, is not the highest. Yeah, no triple mountain drink in this game to offer them that ability to take it, but they'll take the double cloud drink anyway. Maybe if you don't have siege, you can just get underneath a turret for a die faster with double cloud drink. That's one way to look at it. Kha'Zix has gone for the main line on the Dusk Blade, which tells me A, a bit of help with vision control, and B, maybe I can kill Sword when he's trying to split push. I think he's the person you want to get, because otherwise, you see Sion Sejuani, and you think, well, I'm not going to be leaping into a team fight. This is really about being opportunistic around a 1-3-1 one, one, or a 4-1, and also potential cleanup. But clearly, will not be leading with his face. Well, the Kha'Zix, as Viper says, well, over time, I want this turret, and Sword's chunk will do a lot of help to get them that mid lane out of. Yeah, Griffin realizing, okay, Jace, gonna help out here in the seeds, as you were mentioning, there it is. Gonna take that one out. How about oh, another chunk no. on the backside? Soraka, Soraka. From behind. When you lose map control with these counter pick Soraka bot lanes, you really can't do anything, which is what the Soraka is finding. All she can do is what dumb one gaming fans are doing, which is wish. That's all she's got. Yeah. Wishing on a prayer right now. Not so much living on a prayer, lots nope. of dying on a prayer today from the side of that bottom lane of down one. Chunked on a prayer was the name of my high school. Um, Chunked on a prayer? Yeah, that was the name of it. We vomited after the show, it was oh, weird. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, the drums fist, sadly, has not led to the Aww. item we're looking for just yet. We're getting a bit of tankiness on the side of the Scion. Boring. We shout out that. I, I need know. to see some auto resets. I want to see Come Q. Come on, Toby. How much damage do you think with a Titanic Hydra you could do with fully charged Q, auto, Tiamat, Ignite? Probably a lot. Add a bit of chunk. Or chunk. I was going to say chunkiness there. <laughs> uh, tankiness. Still thinking about that. Um, add a bit of tankiness, and I suppose you don't die immediately, which is always the... Scary thing if you go full AD Scion, which I'm sure some of our viewers have done from time to time. If and walk up. A mountain trace, like you mentioned, means you have to be doing a lot of bookkeeping to get this Baron started. And Baron Threat is one of the best ways to force Damwon into a lose-lose scenario. They want to force because in the bot lane, they know that Jace is in turret deletion mode already in this particular game. Damwon's fight is honestly, can we double control ward our blue side jungle? Getting vision onto the Baron is way harder and seems almost impossible. Scion pushes up. 
They're onto the under the turret, the inner turret right now, and every time the two minion waves push up, all Canyon can really do is find that gank bot side we talk about and play to his item. Because items really all they can do is kill Jason a side lane for team fights. He's got nothing. Pings here onto Galio. Not much vision in here. You can see the Ezreal ultimate on the Baron, and they're gonna go 4v1. Showmaker, he's tanky with the Wish, but it's only the Wish, and he is gonna go down here. You can see, if nobody's here and you take out a Galio, they'll do just that. Uh -oh. How about the binding on the Canyon? See you later. Gonna be chunked down there too by the Scion ultimate. Is able to get the follow up from Viper and Griffin once again dominating. Canyon getting exposed in this series. He walks up far too. It doesn't even have evolved spikes, if I'm looking correctly. So, don't know what he was going to do there. And Griffin say, well, with no smite, it's Baron time. Yeah, well, it's five on three. They could always try to turn here if necessary. Some bindings are going to sail wide. Toby's relatively tanky, so they can kind of take their time with this one, but no, they're going to continue being safe, even from over 5,000 gold ahead. They'll just take the money and take it back to the bank. It's just so much pressure for Damwon. Where is safe? And clearly, 10 Teemos in front of your inner turret is not safe, even for the tanky Galio. He saw the vision being cleared. He hoped he could just clear the minion wave and walk Snipe. away. That's not what's to be, and there was the evolved spikes, but... Unfortunately, with that many people there, you were still going to lose your turret, so there was no validity into the positioning coming through from Canyon. His life goes down. No further objective, but Damon Gaming from ahead. When they've got those leads, we see the value of having five prodigious talents, five players in the top ten of solo queue and challenger. But from behind, that's where Griffin have just been able to frustrate annoy and prod them into mistakes yeah. that the coaching staff will be happy they're seeing in the preseason, but will want to actually get them away from when LCK rolls down. Because the best teams, thinking of SKT in the past, other great teams over the years, have been able to frustrate or just full-on force the sort of mistakes we're seeing Dom One Gaming make. Yeah, I'm glad you used those words too, like frustrate and annoy, because this is an annoying style to play against Griffin, just suffocating them essentially over the course of the two games with just straight up better better play overall. And now it looks like Nogri's got a target on his back as Griffin are all grouping up in the bottom side. Griffin can play bot side. They don't respect the Baron damage on the side of dumb ones. It doesn't matter if there's outnumbering around the Baron pit or if they're losing vision control around there. They know that wherever they go, they're going to trade up and they're not worried about what the enemy is going to get in response. Basically for them, their stock traders and dumb ones stock market is closed. It's kind of the way they're playing out this game. Right now, unfortunately, they're not getting the big bets. Only one Infernal. That's the only whale they've been able to catch. Unfortunately, three Cloud Drakes behind it. But with the rotational style they're playing, the in-fight, in-team fight, and also rotational movement speed can be very useful. Yeah, it'll surely be very nice for that, but still waiting for one big team fight to open a big door to an objective or to potentially taking out an inhibitor. We'll see where Griffin go from there. Right now, it's that suffocating vision denial in the bottom side that you can see Nuggery is just kind of in an awkward spot in the side brush saying, am I safe right now? Not really entirely sure. Hoyt's found a way to find a contribution that's not just his ultimate. He's actually gone for an item you almost never see is. Here we go. Well, he's gonna, well, this is nuclear actually. Goes down immediately as that's the third time actually that he's been ulted here by Tarzan. He doesn't even get the wish from Hoyt knows that his AD carry is dead. Hoyt's gone for into the ability to cleanse here. That's the thing he's gone for as his first item because Arden Sense is going to get no value just to take away one CC. Unfortunately, there's many behind the first one, as we know. Showmaker desperately trying to clear a wave, but he can't do it all alone. Canyon gets burst out by the Jace, and the Siege is finally there whenever they have Sword. They pick up another inner turret, only one available is down in the bottom side. Kale's Crucible. You know, he's going to do enough heavy lifting in this game. Really, really need it, though. But Soraka is so annoying to deal with from ahead. In lane phase, when you know where the enemy jungler is, she's spamming the Qs. If she can walk up the side of a fight, the silence field can be oh so important as well. But her positioning is behind the Ezreal. Oh, Ezreal boy. jumps in and then dies. <laughs> Oh, man. Tarzan just did this <laughs> to the enemy jungler, and now he does it to the enemy AD carry. Well, I said that 
Canyon looked a little bit dejected after game number one. I didn't want to use the word tilted. Didn't really look tilted. More no. sad, dejected. But I think we might have another one of those as well. Nogri is going to get the wish this time around to help him out. Sword, unfortunately, not able to get away. Not respecting the damage and the wish and takes a solo loss. And whenever you get a solo kill from this far behind as a team, you feel good about it. Here's the TP. Should be enough. Ooh. Close one. Marzan had his ult, but didn't throw it out. I guess the vision by the end there, he wasn't sure if the travel time was going to be too slow. Backs away. They know TP's down on Galio, and the rest of the members, the victor included, are bot side. Nogri has no mana, but they will not start the Baron. They don't have the Baron speed to do so just yet. Not going to stop there either. No mana, no problem. We'll be able to take out this outer turret down in the bottom side. It's a nice little chunk of gold to try to come back in this one. As well, now Viper's going 1v3, is going to get away. Doesn't get hit by the ultimate, would have put him below half health. We'll come back and lifesteal from the wave. Good job, Nogari. Hasn't had as much negative attention as he did in the previous series. His canyon walks up. Tarzan getting in there, the binding not going to land. So they will not follow up on that kill. You always mentioned the damage. The Lucian wasn't really nearby to put in the killing blow onto the Kha'Zix. Back coming in from the Scion. We're all hoping and praying for the Tiamat into the Ravenous Hydra. But we need to see where he goes with the build. Titanic Hydra, baby. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it's happening. It's actually happening. All right, we need to take a couple of days off of Solar Rank. I yeah. think it's not the time right now. So wait man. until the new year when people forget. I'm very excited New Year's about party. It. This is going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're focusing on all the auto attack cancels, not on a Lucian, but on a Scion yeah. in the next Who cares fight. about the Lucian? That's old. That's boring. <laughs> Titanic Hydra for Toby. Wouldn't have it any other way. Viper right, pushes through mid lane. The pushing from the Scion now is comically fast with a Q and then a Titanic Hydra prox. Instant deleting a wave. Remember, he gets permanent health scaling, so as the game goes on, more and more value out of that Titanic Hydra. Titanic Hydra Chokath was looking pretty good in the promotion tournament. Baron speed here with the AD from the Scion is going to be helpful. Well, Ezreal Ultimate also going to help out here. The TPs are coming in. They want to go for the turn, though. The binding is there on a canyon. And the huge damage from Scion. The wish is not going to help you this time. Shock Blast is going to miss, but it looks like they should have enough damage. Tarzan gets low, but he's got a stopwatch. Sword into the back line is going to take out the third member. Only one remains in nuclear. Then there's nowhere for him to go. Tent's taking out the triple kill for Viper, the ace for Griffin, a and they're going for the win. A perfect ace as well. Blaze to death is nuclear, but that death was inflicted so early in the laning phase. They take over the map. They don't even kill the Baron because they'll take a Nexus and force a game number three where they come in already with three match points. Well, they wiped the floor with them in game number one. Game number two, similar, took only three extra minutes, but Griffin looking so dominant as they kill the Nexus for the second time. GG goes to the side of Griffin. Can't wait to see what they bring out for game three. And if you're Damwon Gaming's coach, Invictus Gaming's world coach in Kim Jong-soo, is Sejuani hitting the ban list? Is suddenly a thing you have to seriously consider? And even if you ban that Sejuani, we know there's plenty of champions behind <laughs> that. Griffins had to cho show something. They've shown us 80 Scion. They've showed us Sejuani. And yet, we know they can play the standard as well. And that's where the nightmares really begin as Griffin look to coast their way into the Kesper Cup Grand Final. Sign there and told the whole story, points to it. Our Griffins, Tarzan, I love you. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people on the side of Griffin and all the Griffin fans are saying a lot of the same here. As now even Showmaker looks lost for words. Just, he didn't lose the lane up against that. Uh, oh, hold, calm down there, CV Max. No choking on the sword because he didn't choke today. Outside of that one solo kill, I guess. <laughs> but uh, uh, either way, Looking like on the side of Domwon, everybody's a little bit dumbfounded and lost for words here. I want to see what they have in response, too, because Domwon, still a strong team. They have to have something new for Game 3. You can't be tilted if you're Domwon, Valdez, because it feels like they're getting beaten by people superior to them, and that's hard to tilt about. It should only just energize them to practice more, because right now Griffin looks on another level.
Every time I see a down one player, you can see it in their eyes. Dejected. Not, not feeling good right now. But uh, guys, we are going to go to a commercial break. Can't wait to come back for game three. Should be another fun one here, but we'll see you after a quick commercial break. Stay tuned.